This lesson is for you to actually see an application of shared arrays uh, with a classical uh, problem in computer science as well. That is the K means. And I need an application for this problem. I'm going to start with some cats because I have a lot of them. I have to uh, talk about them. Suppose that you have four cats and each one have their own color, but you somehow decide that you need to classify them in groups. You can just look at their color, their, their fur, and look for pattern. Or in this specific case, I just want to see their color. I will create by my own uh, scale. I'm defining that a white cat means zero and a black cat means one. This is not uh, universally true. I can define my scale as I want. I could start by minus one to one or other parameter. And I'm, I need to group them together in some uh, systematic approach. I could say that uh, these two cats, they are close to, to the other because they, one is white and other is light gray. Therefore, they belong to the first group. And the other cats belong to the se second group because the one is completely black and, and the other is dark gray. This approach with just four cats is good, but maybe you don't have so little cats. Maybe you have a lot of cats, maybe you have thousands of cats uh, at your home, and you need a computer to make a classification, a, a clusterization of them for you. The most uh, well-known, for sure, a clustering algorithm is the k-means. I'm gonna actually review them here, if you already know, uh, just skip the, the video for the, for the parallel part, but if you never heard about this problem, uh, here is a short version for you. Imagine that you have four items, so I'm not talking about cats anymore. They are just uh, numbers on, on the screen. And I want to classify them up to K groups, okay? I define these. There are ways to automatically guess what is the best number, but I will be defining how many groups I want. And because I define that I want two, three, or four groups, I need to have a seed. I need to define where is more or less the center uh, of the group. The, the center, the position of the center is what we call uh, the centroid. I will define some uh, centroids on the screen. They are usually produced at, at random. Maybe you are very lucky that you arrive, if you put a centroid exactly where the center me is or, or not, but we will make something simple. I suppose at random that these are the centroids of my problem. Next, I will compute the distance from all points to the centroids. That is, I'm gonna make an operation of computing the distance wherever it is the operation of distance for you. From all the points, from 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, and 1, to both centroids that you create, okay? Next, I'm gonna claim that the group that each point belong, it is the one nearest, it is to the nearest centroid. For instance, on this example, I'm gonna claim that point zero and 0 0.4 belongs to this centroid, to this group, and I'm gonna claim that 0 0.7 and one belongs to this group. After I have uh, cl classified them, uh, uh, to the nearest uh, centroid, I'm going to compute a new centroid position as the average of all the points inside the group. Uh, here on this specific example, uh, the centroid is already uh, on the middle of 0 and 0 0.4, so the centroid will not change so much. But from 0 0.7 and 1, the new centroid probably is going to be here uh, in, in the middle because uh, this group, right, 0 0.7 and 1, this group, the average position is probably here in the middle. Now, this is the part that is interesting for us. How are we going to make this algorithm to run in parallel? Well, you're going to actually take your data and split across different nodes. And inside each node, we're going to apply the algorithm that we have seen before with some caveats. The first caveat is that we start in a master node with some global centroids, and we're going to broadcast throughout all the nodes. Inside each node, we're going to pretend that nothing else exists, and we're going to compute the position of the local centroid with your local data. After that, we're going to merge our results together, and then we're going to get an average of many averages, okay? 
each uh, node creates its own uh, centroid position. We're going to take an average of all of them. Then the process uh, repeats. We're going to broadcast this new, new global position across all the nodes until we converge uh, up to some value. Here is one example for you to see. I imagine that I have six values and I have three nodes that you're looking on the screen. And I'm going to claim the following. I'm going to claim that there are two groups and here are their positions at 50 and 100. By you just looking, you can just guess that 41, 42 and 43 are closer to 50 and 102, 102 and 103 are closer to 100. Okay, you can already guess that, but your code does not know that yet. And the part of distributing uh, with shared arrays it is because we're going to actually use this, right? Uh, each node, it's each piece of your common uh, array is going to be distributed with shared arrays. Just for you to see step by step what we're going to be doing. I will broadcast this value to all the nodes. Therefore, 50 and 100 are going to be part of my computations of averages. This is not necessary. Some people may even claim that I'm wrong. But I want you to see the, the, the number, so uh, I'm going to make part of the average, the, the initial centroid, even though it's wrong. On this first node, we're going to actually compute the k-means, and we're going to come up with the conclusion that 41 and 42 belongs to the same group as 50, and 100 was alone. We're going to do this the same for other blocks, for the second node, for the third node, after we compute the average of each one of these, that is, we have our local centroids, we're going to get them somehow. We're going to uh, retrieve uh, their values. We're going to take an average. And from the average, we're going to repeat the process again and again. Let's see the code. 